drones and the EV tools and all that. Uh, please like, share, subscribe. Let anybody else know that you might also enjoy it. And uh, thank you so much. Thank you so much, everybody. Okay. Uh, yeah. So this next article comes to you from CNN Business. And basically the, the, for, the, the lay down on this one is pretty simple. Uh, the reason why it caught my eye this morning is basically they come out and they say from CNN Business, Rivian beats Tesla GM Ford to build their first electric pickup truck. Um, <clears throat> unfortunately, the first thing that I noticed is that in the actual beginning of the article is uh, it's not a truck. That's their SUV. So yeah, they okay. might have done a little bit more homework on that one. But uh, they did uh, they did actually get some other things down here in this article correct. And who is Rivian? Well, they are the startup truck company that's building the R1T pickup. And as you know, this is a hotly contested market right now with Cybertruck making a, an impressive entry in the PR stance uh, about a year and a half ago, expressing that they're going to jump into the marketplace and the Ford F-150 Lightning and a bunch of others that are willing to take over this space as fast as possible. Being that the number one selling vehicles in the United States of America currently are, well, trucks. Trucks. So yep. what's interestingly enough is they're basically saying that Rivian has already produced all their pre-production vehicles. They've already gone through all the hoops <laughs> that are necessary on the government side to prove that their vehicles are safe and able to be on the road. And on top of which, uh, there's other investors like Ford, Amazon, and others that are backing part of their investment. Okay, So they're bringing their trucks forward, but they're about ready to start their deliveries. Okay, and Rivian is priced at a healthy $73,000. And they've already sold out of their launch edition trucks, according to the article, and they're now taking orders for January 2022. Okay, it's, mm -hmm. it's a, it's yeah. a nice-looking vehicle. However, there's, there's something, there's a little bit of a caveat here. They will be the first one probably to deliver a truck to their customer. That, that, is, that, is, yeah. that is true. But yeah. um, not to be outdone, though, at the same day, and this one comes to you via Axios, uh, basically what's ending up happening is Axios is saying that demand for the Ford F-150 Lightning has also forced Ford to step up their hiring practices right now and put more people on the line to develop their pre-production vehicles for testing for the Ford F-150 Lightning. Okay, and uh, Ford has got over 150,000 pre-orders, and this is big money for these companies. This is not a small marketplace. Uh, we all knew that this was coming. We've been following this for a while now in parts of our conversation. But now all of a sudden, the Ford F-150 Lightning, uh, which starts at a much lower price with a smaller uh, range, apparently, they're all of a sudden in the conversation for getting their production up and running, all threatening at the same time Cybertruck and their dominance in pre-orders. Uh, so that's where we stand today. And what, man, what are you thinking? What are you thinking this means for the marketplace? I mean, first off, uh, yeah, it's it's nice to see Rivian's actually. Is Rivian or uh, Rivian? I can't. Still, I'm saying it wrong. Um, again. I I hope it's. Uh, yeah, there you go. If we're saying it right, Rivian. I, I'm not sure. Uh, but I do. I have been following this company for a while, and now that they're actually got uh, models rolling off the line and going to customers, it's it is really nice to see. Uh, a quick search around the internet for maybe some videos, and you can see other people have tested it. Um, and it looks like a nice package. Uh, and yeah. a lot of the comments kind of say that even the, the, the initial test models are are almost like uh, customer ready. There's not they don't seem like a whole lot more iteration needs to be done on these. They're they're pretty much ready to go. So mm -hmm. in terms of quality and ride and you know and uh, and all that stuff. So it's it's nice to see. Um, yeah, you mentioned that it's uh, starting at 73. That's the initial release. Um, and that one is called the launch edition. Yeah, it was 73,000. All those are reserved and all taken for. Mm -hmm. um, and there's there's a few other models, but the, there is, as you mentioned, the other one's coming January 2022. Uh, and that's um, uh, 675. So mm -hmm. a little bit cheaper, a little bit different options, of course, just three main three main things there. But there is some cool stuff in there that talk about some of the standard stuff. Uh, for example, all the all of the models, the three models will have the same pack. 314 mm -hmm. miles of range is what they're claiming. Nice. Um, they do claim that it can tow stuff too, as well. I mean, uh, we know 11, electric pounds, motors. What's yeah. that? Up to 11,000 pounds is what their website is saying. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we do know that uh, you can get a pretty good amount of torque out of electric motors, and there this is no no exception here as well. Uh, as we mentioned before, depending on what you use these EVs, any EVs for, right? That's going to have a hit on range. Um, so, you know, th that should be kind of almost, uh, self-explanatory by now, to, even if it's, you know, airplanes or whatever it might be, anything with electricity or any kind of engine actually for that matter. But, you know, how you use it determines how much, uh, uh fuel or electricity you use. But nevertheless, 314 miles of range in all the models, which is pretty cool. I didn't, I didn't 
I didn't see on there that they would be like the same battery pack as let's say Tesla's done in right. the past, but you wouldn't be able to access all of those miles, which is maybe something that some people don't know. You know, I mean, you uh, there was a time when you buy Teslas and it had the longer range pack, but then you couldn't use all that unless you bought the upgrade, which is just a software update. Um, I haven't seen such a thing with the Rivian, uh, the Rivian model, so that's nice. Uh, such as, as far as I can see, they have a system very similar to autopilot with uh, some radar sensors, ultrasonic sensors around the around the vehicle. So it looks nice, and you know, man, it would be cool to test drive one. Uh, I, I'm interested. Uh, of course, I'm still interested in seeing the Cybertruck too, but this looks nice. I mean, yeah, yeah, uh, pretty pretty cool. Yeah. I was playing some video in the background while you were talking there for a minute, and that was them, you know, trekking this thing across different various terrains. Now, look. We took a lot of flack in a couple of comments a month and a half ago, maybe two months ago, when we talked about Lordstown Motors, which was another truck entry, yes. which has suffered some critical setbacks because uh, two of their primary members of their development team, actually the CEO of the company, mm -hmm. uh, walked off and basically said, "We're you know we're done with this," and it has spooked investors. But you know we also have can uh, canoe, 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 whatever it is. Uh, you know these guys all have these fancy names. They're they're looking to make their entry into the marketplace as well. So there's a bunch of factors, I think, right now that, that you have to look at what's going to differentiate yourself in this market, right? Um, they do have, like you said, the goods on this. And I also know that some of their models also are really, really uh, good adventurers because they've packed in things like, I think it's grills, right? And different storage compartments behind the seats. Didn't they have like a model that's like an adventurer where they can fly different modules in and out? And like, it's, I think it's called the gear tunnel. Yeah, this gear tunnel that they talk about. Uh, can be outfitted with actual camping gear, and it comes with either a uh, a camp kitchen that can slide out, and this uh, some other adventure gear that they're saying can be adapted. So this thing looks like it's the true kind of if it's the EV that's going to go hedge almost up against a Jeep and a pickup truck at the same time. This is the one that looks like it's got the legs because they put a little bit more thought of it than just saying, "Hey, we're going to have a you know a truck body, electric components, mm -hmm. and throw this thing out there in the marketplace." It seems a little bit more Kickstarter esque and and thoroughly thought of as an adventure truck or yeah. something that's going to go forward in the market. Yep, yep. It's a little bit smaller uh, than you would think. Probably things like you know a full size Ram or some of the bigger trucks that are on the market now. So we have to think like when for, you talk about the Ford Lightning yeah. earlier, like size differences. Um, uh, but but as far as like just what you said, like kind of a Jeep or like a smaller truck, this is like, it, yeah, it's, it seems really well thought out. And I do like some of these features just in terms of, you know, if you're going to take this thing kind of uh, like on an adventure, you're going to go somewhere, camp out. Uh, you can see that a lot of the and this is just me talking but a lot of the people they have in there, their pictures are, you know, oh, yeah, a little bit younger, mm -hmm. maybe um, so a little bit more adventure based. Out, outdoorsy sure. type. So, uh, yeah, I think it's cool. Yeah, yeah. I think it should be pretty, pretty well, cool. Well, we wish them luck. And look, so the next part of it is going to be who's going to really make the bigger impact, right? Now, are these guys going to drive home their truck experience enough that they're going to dominate the marketplace, that they're going to be able to get enough of them on the road? Because there's three major disadvantages that they currently don't have. Number one, they do not have a dealership. Uh, so, so, like, they don't have any way to go out and see these trucks in the open. There's no dealerships. So they have to launch a PR campaign to try to keep people in, involved and try to bring these trucks out into the public so people can get a hold of them and get that that basic tactile feel of touched sense feel. So put it in their hands and maybe they'll buy it. So that's number one. Number two, they don't have a name brand, right? This isn't a Tesla. This isn't a Ford. Uh, this isn't a Hummer. This isn't a branding exp you know, situation where everybody knows what these guys are up to and it can associate that name to a brand so that's another negative that's going forward with them and number three is they also don't have any infrastructure so they don't have any charging stations they're gonna have to go off the other backbones of others that that are out there right now so those are the only three negatives right now that i can see their to their entire strategy so mm. it's uh so just two things that that maybe people that might be seeing the video be interested in too so they do say that if you buy a rivian uh, you can obviously buy it on your phone or computer, could just just like you you know could buy Teslas too. But they do also say that if you after you take delivery of the vehicle, you have seven days or one thousand miles to return it if you mm. so choose, uh, which is pretty That's pretty nice. cool uh, for you know a car. We're not talking you know a TV or anything. We're talking a truck. Uh, and then uh, also they do mention you know as you, as you're talking about charging, that was literally what I was trying to find trying to find exact because I saw it earlier. But anyway, 
Um, they they do say, yeah, you have to use other DC fast chargers that are available, but they do also say that they're installing 10,000 Rivian waypoint chargers uh, f- for this, for, you know, 10,000 Rivian chargers. I don't know where, yeah. uh, and that's uh, that's going to be something that, uh, you know, if you were, you know, looking to find this out, um, they do have a map of where they... Are we putting them? Uh, but this is, and, and, and again, I'm very Tesla-esque, but maybe that's what it's going to take. Because we, we've talked about before, one of the things, and you can't deny it, but one of the things that really made Tesla work is the charging in- infrastructure. Yeah. And that, that's that's a no-brainer, right? I yeah. mean, if people can't charge or they have the anxiety that they may run out of battery, even if they actually wouldn't, it's that's enough. People wouldn't buy it. So And, and um, the key word there is yeah. installing. They're still installing. And that's, that's mm-hmm. another thing that's going to take some work for them to build up that relationship. And I only bring up those factors because, actually... This truck, I have a little bit of faith in because if they're able to get to the point now where they can successfully deliver something to a customer, great, <clears throat> because that's where we need to be there. You know, and I and I can't stress that enough that competition is good, but you got to be able to survive. Right. So, yep. well, hey, it's folks, definitely something to watch. They got all the all the, all the components. So, yeah. Yeah, it's, we'll see. We'll see how they get going. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, if you guys get a chance, like, subscribe, follow. Let us know what you think in the comments below, who you think is going to be the most successful truck in the marketplace. As these EVs grow, who knows? I mean, any one of them has a, has a place to grow to become a market dominant leader. So let's see what happens with them going forward. Okay, uh, next up is.